Huawei Joe Berg Day with 947. Jeremy Loops, welcome to Huawei Joe Berg Day and 947. Obviously, it's our lockdown edition, so it's on a online. Uh, we're going to be streaming this on the internet and playing it out on the radio. You know, so it, like it's crazy for us to be doing Huawei Joe Berg Day like this. Um, sure. you've, done, you've done a few lockdown shows. What's the feeling? What's it? What's it different? What's different for you? The difference between these like kind of lockdown online shows, the Zoom, the Zoom way of life, the norm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, the big difference for sure is just that you know that people are watching in a different context. So just the way that like as a performer, you're performing in a certain context, you know, when you go play certain venues, you, you know, if you're playing a really big venue, you get like sparks going and like streamers and all the bits and pieces because there's a much bigger audience it's difficult to reach the people at the back you need like you need shenanigans going on if you're playing a small intimate club uh then you know you've got like all 300 people in front of you and you don't need all of that stuff because your music can reach them and you don't need a big sound system it's a bit more personal with the online situation you know that people are well first of all you don't know where people are exactly but you know they are probably in the bath having a glass of wine, watching you. Uh, I, I did a show once where we actually put like the little videos, people could have their videos up. And I saw a lady ironing while she was watching. Um, no. I'm telling you, like, if you think that everyone's sitting behind their screens, dressed up in their like Friday night gear, jumping up and down, you're wrong. Um, people are hanging out and people are relaxing and having a good time. And so I've been making sure that my performances online match that energy and, and also just taking it easy, being casual. I normally at my live shows, I'm standing, I'm dancing around at my online shows. I sit, I light a fire. I have a glass of red wine myself and I, I tell stories and I sing my songs in that way. And I, for me, that's felt a lot more organic and, and matched. Yeah. Uh, you've got a new song, a B, by the way, is the new track that, that's out. Uh, you know, yeah. I was listening to it going, I, I know that you started writing a lot of new stuff earlier on in the year. You, by now, you probably wanted to be touring the world again. Uh, and, but listening to, by the way, there's, a, there's an element of being strong that's in there. You know, like, uh, was, that, was that a song pre-COVID? Is that a COVID track? That song was written in the first month of COVID. So it was, uh, it was as it all hit. And uh, it was, you know, the, the world was already completely crazy by then. So it's not like that was the, um, that COVID was the clincher for that song. It, it feels like we've been going through just a sustained period for the last good few years of, yeah, just democratic decline, uh, fascism on the rise, racism on the rise, fear on the rise. And it's difficult because the world's a scary place and history tells us that everything goes through these cycles and we're clearly on one now. And um, yeah, I wrote that song definitely from a strong place of just knowing that we're going to have to all dig incredibly deep to get through this, this moment um, yeah. and these next few years, however that goes. We've, uh, during, during the pandemic, all of us have had to, I think all of us have taken moments of self-reflection, you know, looking at our own lives, how we do things, uh, considering who we are. Have you had that as well? Have you felt like I've got to deal with some issues or have you thought about what the world is like, you know? Definitely. I, um, I've also been trying to make this year something that I can remember in a positive way for myself. So I've been tackling a lot of the things that I've been leaving hanging for a while, you know, the things that every year I just put off because I was like, you know, for, for instance, uh, three weeks ago, I had my tonsils taken out, which was right. something I... I've been trying to do for 10 years. I've just never plucked up the courage. And I just thought, what better year than this terrible year of mayhem to just face this fear of removing my tonsils and dealing with pain for three weeks. So it's been a rough recovery, but um, it felt really good to get that done. And I, I know I'll look back at 2020 and be like, well, there was a, something I faced up to. And uh, my hope is that I, yeah, everyone kind of tackles just a few of those personal things as well that they've been meaning to get yeah. to, whether it's your health and fitness finally being tackled uh, or that special passion project that you knew you wanted to get off the ground. You just never had time. I think people have been blessed with time. So um, I think there has been a lot of that. And um, yeah, but who knows? It's been super overwhelming for, for everyone. And I think if you've survived it in some shape or form, that's, that's good enough. 
I've got to ask you about tutonsils quickly, right? So I remember, I mean, most of us had them out as kids. You know, it's that thing that kids go through. So I remember yeah. clearly as a child, I used to, I remember how sore it was. And my parents gave me like biltong and like salty chips. So as an adult, what is the equivalent when you get your tonsils taken out? How does it work? There's, there's literally no updated evidence either way. People were, <laughs> I, I put out a, I put out a post on Facebook saying, give me your best advice <clears throat> and uh, on Instagram. And I got hundreds of comments, most of which, if I were to like tally it up, were saying Coca-Cola was like a big one. Everyone was like, drink fizzy drinks. Um, right. And uh, knickknacks came up a lot. Fritos came up a lot. Uh, two minute noodles, ice cream, um, like ice lollies. So... I tried all of that stuff and I ended up feeling pretty horribly sick because you are also taking antibiotics to make sure you don't get yeah. any infections and which aren't good for your stomach. And then if you can you know, if you compound that with knickknacks and Coca-Cola, which I did for the first few days, you start Healthy to feel diet. pretty, pretty horrendous, but it does soothe the throat. So yeah, the, the up, there's no real updates. You still just go through like a solid two weeks of pain and you generally don't want to eat normal hard food so you kind of eat all sorts of uh yeah, all sorts of rubbish so uh, the the virtual we've got this virtual huawei joburg day when you think joburg right i mean you've done incredible shows in joburg you've performed at joburg day before what do you think of joburg crowds you know we love you we love you constantly Anna Zwelli spoke to you a while ago the breakfast club spoke to you uh, just after lockdown when you think Joburg, what, what's in your heart? Yeah, we've always been super well received in Joburg. We've always found uh, a second home there as far as being a Cape Town band. And most of my biggest shows have been in Josie. So I got a huge amount of love for coming to play there. And obviously Joburg Day as well. You know, I've played Joburg Day, I think three or four times. So it's, uh, it's always like a big event on the roster. You guys always go the extra mile to make sure the day is huge. Um, some of the biggest stages in the country are happening at Joburg Day, you know, with all the, all the shebangs that we spoke about before, the, the streamers yeah. and all the fun stuff. So as an artist, you look forward to those days just because you know you're going to be playing on a massive sound system with 30,000 people in front of you and just all the good stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's one, on one hand sad that we're not able to do it this year, but I'm super excited that we're doing something, that we're getting this virtual one going. And um, I think that's what we have to do right now. You know, we've got to do what we can do and just bring as much of the good stuff to the crowds as we can in whatever way we can. And I know we'll be back, you know, and Josie's a huge music loving community. So if anything, the live music is not going anywhere at all. You know, people are, I think, rearing to go and ready as soon as this is all over to just get back uh, performing. And I think artists are as well. So, but in the meanwhile, this is what we're doing and we're going to do it well. Look, this is going to be a massive jam. We've got a whole bunch of tricks up our sleeve for our virtual Huawei Joburg Day as well. Uh, awesome. Trust me, you're not going to feel alone. And I can tell you now, I doubt you're going to see someone ironing their clothes uh, watching okay, you perform. Good. Right, I can guarantee it. We, we've got parties set up everywhere. Oaks are going to be watching and we'll be awesome. streaming some of that stuff to you on stage as well. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for joining us today. We're super excited. Looking forward to your, your new music as well. By the way, it's the new song. It's incredible. Uh, I'm sure you're going to play it for us, right? Right? I'm going to play it for you for sure. Yeah, we've been working on it okay. as a band. That's the other thing is we haven't been able to play together as a band. So it's been fun just this week having band practices, rehearsing songs that I've now been writing over lockdown. But they are, yeah, they've been kind of, we haven't been able to be together. So nice for us to be back together and flying up to Jersey for a show. It feels like this is the first time in 10 months we've done that. So we're excited. Crazy. That's crazy. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, bro. Uh, can't Anytime. wait to see what you've got for us. Huawei Joe Birthday with 947. Yeah, Styled by the new Huawei Watch Fit.